Hey you guys, today for our read aloud, we're gonna be reading My Trip to St. Helena Island. And this is about discovering Gullah Geechee culture. We talked a little bit about Gullah Geechee culture when we were talking about our culture unit, of course. And this is a culture that is in South Carolina, mainly around Charleston. And so I thought this would be a great book to read today. The Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor was designated by an act of Congress on October 12, 2006 in an effort to preserve and protect Gullah Geechee culture. St. Helena Island, South Carolina falls within the Gullah Geechee Heritage Corridor. This is an introduction to a beautiful sea island and its rich culture. I arrived in Beaufort County early in the morning. St. Helena Island is located in Beaufort County. The weather was perfect. The sun was shining and there was a cool breeze blowing. The Woods Memorial Bridge is one of the bridges I had to cross to get to St. Helena Island. The bridge was featured in the movie Forrest Gump. That's a very famous movie. Your parents have probably seen it. St. Helena Island is a sea island. Sea islands are a change chain of tidal and barrier islands in the southeastern Atlantic Ocean coast of the United States. I went to St. Helena Island to learn about the Gullah Geechee people. Gullah Geechee people are descendants of enslaved people from West Africa. And you can see the sign right there says Cultural Heritage Corridor. St. Helena Island is full of Gullah Geechee culture. A lot of language, foods, and traditions have been preserved over the year. And we remember that the different parts of culture are food, language, traditions, music, what they wear, the jobs that they have, the things they celebrate, all of those make up the culture. Beautiful rice canals built hundreds of years ago can still be seen along the coast today. Enslaved Gullah people designed and built rice canals for growing valuable Carolina gold rice. I passed this interesting tree while sightseeing on St. Helena Island. The trees on the island grow, bend, and hang in mysterious looking ways. Now that is a funky looking tree. My first stop on St. Helena Island was the historic Penn Center. It is the site where former of the former Penn School. Penn School opened in 1862. It was one of the first schools for freed slaves in the South. Penn School followed Booker T. Washington's model of industrial skills and training. Gullah students learned farming, homemaking, and other skills used for creating a successful life. Penn School students also made beautiful sweet grass baskets like this one. This handmade Gullah art began in West Africa. This art has been passed down from generation to generation. And if you've ever been to the Charleston market, you will see these sweet grass baskets there that you can actually buy. How cool is that? Also, I think it's interesting that at the Penn School, they teach things like farming and homemaking rather than math and reading. That's so weird. I wonder what it's been like to go to school there. The St. Helena Library has a beautiful room that's shaped like a sweet grass basket. The library has won several awards for its unique interior design. The library's Gullah Geechee room has lots of information about culture. There are books about the art, music, food, and history of the Gullah Geechee people. My next stop was this small Coffin Point Praise House. It was built by Gullah people around 1900. Can you believe it's still standing? It's 120 years old. Prayer, praise houses were built on or near the plantations where the Gullah people were enslaved. The Gullah people used praise houses for worshiping and for settling community disputes. The Chapel of Ease is a spooky place to visit. It was built about 1740. They enslaved Gullah people built the enslaved Gullah people built the Chapel of Ease out of Tabby. The invention of Tabby can be traced back to Africa. To make tabby, the Gullah people crushed and burnt oyster shells into a powder called lime. Next, they mixed the lime with water, broken oyster shells, and sand. Tabby making was a lot of hard work. Have you ever seen any buildings that have tabby on them when you go to the beach, maybe? The Chapel of Ease burned a forest fire in 1886. The roof is gone, but most of the walls are still standing. There are lots of graves and spooky trees that surround these historic ruins. Seafood is a big part of Gullah culture. Shrimping, fishing, and crabbing are major industries along the coast. That means a lot of people in industry, so a lot of people work for those businesses. So a lot of people work with shrimping, crabbing, and fishing. <laughs> These blue crabs are fresh from the ocean. I think it's time to eat. Yum, you know Miss Off. Love her some crab legs. 
I ended my trip at the Gullah Grub restaurant where I ate yummy foods from the Gullah culture. Collard greens, gumbo, seafood, and okra are just a few Gullah favorites. Have you eaten some of those types of food? Then you've eaten some Gullah culture food. This trip taught me that Gullah culture is a big part of American culture. I can't wait to visit again and learn more about St. Helena Island and Gullah culture too. If you get the chance, you can visit too. And then you'll see they have a glossary explaining a lot of the different terms because this book is nonfiction. And it says, in honor of our ancestors, we will always remember in all things, honor our mighty ancestors who sacrificed and endured so that we could exist today. They are the light from which a new day descends. And there's a beautiful piece of Gullah Kichi artwork. How fun! I absolutely loved sharing this book with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it and had a fabulous day. Fabulous day. I can't talk. Make sure that you check out the talk about it prompt in your lesson plan today and talk to your dog, your mom, your brother, uh, the ladybug flying outside about the topic for today to make sure that we are comprehending what we are reading. All right. I love you guys so much. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.